Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. What's up? My name's Timmy Joe, making videos about computers on the internet. What's up my little fine feathered friends? We're here and we're on the we're on the cusp and everyone's been hating on it. And uh, yes, our green green themed computer. Green themed friends here have been giving us a line of BS and everyone's been hating on it. RTX ray tracing 10 10 and ETI is required to get the same performance. Yeah, we all know it's kind of BS, don't we? However, I want to think back to Vega, okay? We waited for a billion years for Vega. Longer than we waited from 1080 Ti to now. And everyone was like, it's gonna be so good! At least the fanboys were, it's gonna be so good! You know it? And yeah, I even participated in that. And that's why I haven't done any like RTX projection videos. Because I don't know, okay? And I'd like to keep my, my integrity intact this time because I made a lot of videos about how good Vega was going to be and it turned out to be bad even when Frontier Edition I think that's yeah Front Founder Frontier Edition launched it was like what's the gaming benchmarks I remember being like just get to be better don't worry guys it's a different card it was totally the same card totally the same card and here we are we're waiting forever for an update and we finally are going to have one and I'm just doing a little retrospective on Team Green's Mean Machine Okay, the 1080 Ti, and it's the best, well, no, it's not the best. Volta, Tesla, oh god, it's not the best at all. So we know that things can't be that bad. Because we've seen the performance of Volta, there's no way they're going to release a card that in gaming doesn't at least match that, and it is pretty good. You know, so we have something to look forward to, I do believe. Except for the price, and that's what a lot of people are harping on. But it makes sense, they got to make the most money they can, especially now that mining is tanked, it's... You know, we're in a position now where this thing here, you know, with some pretty damn good performance still to this day, rocking a 4K BenQ monitor here, it's playing a lot of video games with it, doing some benchmarks, and I'm impressed with the performance this thing keeps up with, and it does a pretty good job, especially, you know, at 60 hertz. 144, hmm, you'd be turning down a lot of settings to do that, but it's, it's not a bad little machine. So we got some, you know, time spy running here. We're going to show some fire strike results. We're going to show 4K benchmarks. And that way we can be prepped because I'm going to be getting rid of this card. Even though it's like the blower crappy version, the MSI Arrow, it's probably worse than the Founders Edition. Uh, I'm going to be getting rid of it so that I can put the money towards RTX because apparently NVIDIA is cherry picking who they're allowing the drivers to for this. And they pretty much, if, you know, a gigabyte wants to send me the card, NVIDIA's got to approve it, and if, you know, there's just no question because I'm not big enough or I'm not strong enough, uh, I'm probably not going to get a review sample for these cards, at least not until a little bit later once the, you know, things have launched. So I'm going to probably pre-order one, and I don't suggest that you do that. So we're up at time spot. we got 9352, okay, with a graphics score of 10,280. That's at overclock settings. I'll show you the overclock settings here. But, uh, you know, that's not uh, as far as this card can go. Because I've had a much better Gigabyte ARS Ultra Gaming version of this that could almost get to 2100 megahertz all on its lonesome when you max the fans, or not even maxing the fans out and stuff like that. But with a blower version like I've got here, you're definitely limiting yourself and uh, it's hard to break 2K. It's hard to break you know, two gigahertz, but I got another 100 or 99 on the core and 350 on the memory. It will go higher than that, but for ultra stability with this craptacular cooler, that's kind of where it goes. And I'll show you where the gigahertz end up. And I've got a little benchmarks for you. Keep that in mind. It's coming up in a little bit a second. So we're launching into a in, uh, test system. It's my Core i7 quad core for 7740X, which I'll also be getting rid of very, very soon. We're going to get a coffee lake, but getting near 400 FPS in uh, in heaven benchmark, which, you know, see it's at 1974 megahertz. With some modding, which I did do with an NZXT bracket, I could get this very card to push around 2050, and that was about as far as it would go. Uh, but with that blower on it, it starts throttling a bit and it hovers around 1950 at best with the blower on full, you know, full gambit here. I'll even, well, let's experience the sound of it to go. Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, where is it going? There we go. This is what it sounds like. 
It's not as bad as some blower cards I've I've heard. I mean, with headphones on, I wouldn't. I could play like this, but it's obviously not the best situation. That is for sure. There are better 1080 Ti's out there, and we will see the performance on this card is pretty good at 4K. So we have a lot to look forward to with RTX. But my argument here is not RTX. It's that RTX will drive the price of this down even further. So let's check out some things and stuff. So here we go. Boom. This is my all-time Fire Strike highest possible with this card. Uh, I got a graphics score of 31089. And that's pretty damn good. Um, I've, I've seen LN2, you know, cooled cards get around 35,000. So the fact that I'm, you know, up at 31 with uh, just a water cooling mod with the NZXT mod on it, I thought it was doing pretty good, but uh, you know, with the just a quad core, I got nice twenty two thousand, you know, nine seventy one. You're very lucky if you can get thirty thousand with some extreme cooling measures, just to kind of give you the performance numbers and you know what's what's possible with a crappy blower card. You know, with a really good version, you might be able to bump that graphic score up, uh, you know, a little bit. But you know, the power of the GeForce 1080 Ti, Pascal, you know, over Maxwell. It's got a boost clock and the things and the stuff. So, um, yeah, so we, 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 what I have this page open for, if I can ever find my mouse, is the MSRP up here, 699 Yeah? Well, let's look at, oh, here we go, $599, $100 less for a refurbished Asus blower card. So the prices are down, and they're only going to creep a little lower. But I think uh, NVIDIA is slotting this card to still sell at around $600 MSRP-ish when the new cards come out. But you can look forward to all of those early adopters throwing their 1080 Ti's on eBay and you maybe get one for 500 bucks. That's a, that's a wicked deal. You know, you probably do that right now if you really deal hunted. And for, you know, a Gigabyte GTX 1080 Ti Aorus Extreme Edition versions to be 679, we're doing not so bad. Because I'm going to show you this. Oh my God, RTX 1249 for an MSI triple fan version for pre order. You know, a Gigabyte. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, 10 or RTX 2080 being a hundred dollars more, I'm probably going to be around the same performance. Hmm, makes sense. So yeah, I've got a load of benchmarks and I'll show you them. And I got to say, I had a lot of fun rocking this BenQ 4k monitor at 60 Hertz. Uh, you know, with some, there is HDR on here, but when I turned it on, I didn't really see much of a difference. If anything, colors looked weirder in like Far Cry 5. So all these are no pro post processing, like no MSAA and stuff like that. Try to hit the highest possible settings. Uh, and still get 60 FPS. And we'll run through these nice little benchmarks I ran on a whole whack of newer-ish games. When we come back, I'll do a little final, final summation.
bringing it back. Oh, not bad. Seriously. I actually reviewed the Gigabyte card at 4K and, you know, this exact motherboard, actually, and, and CPU uh, about a year ago. And I was, like, not impressed with the performance. And now that I'm a little bit more in the, in the know and I've got this nice 4K monitor, 32 inches, I was really enjoying cranking the settings up, cranking the resolution up and how good some of these games really look. Like Project Cars 2 for, oh, so beautiful at 4K, and it can rock it at like pretty high settings. Um, you know, Far Cry, one of the worst games, worst performers on the list, 45, still looked beautiful. A little bit of screen tearing here and there, and this monitor has no adaptive sync for NVIDIA. It has G or, uh, FreeSync, but not G-Sync. Yeah, that's no problem. It's still pretty nice. This system's able to keep up, even though it's just a quad core, but it's time to get old with the old and get on with the new, and I'm going to be trying to get my hands on some of this newer stuff, so I wanted to take a look back and see how this 1080 Ti, even if it's not the best version, you know, one that you're probably going to be able to pick up, a blower style version for around 500 bucks very, very soon on eBay, maybe even less, how it stacks up, and it stacks up fairly well. It does well. You can play 4K games. As long as you're not looking for high refresh rate, as long as you don't mind cranking down a few settings in some of the games with this card. And it's uh, a beast. I really like it, especially with 11 gigs of, you know, DDR6 memory or 5 plus, sorry, whatever. And, um, you know, the, the it, but really, you can't go wrong with it if you can afford it. But should you wait for RTX? Probably not until the prices come down a little bit. But I don't think that NVIDIA deserves the flack they're getting relatively speaking i know that the ray tracing and the 10 you know needing a bunch of 1080 ti's to equal the performance of ray tracing and yet for ray tracing it just works everything just works in games was a bad way to market this especially with their like variation on how much cards were going to be compared to the msrp of the founders editions cards and it was really confusing and how they're probably going to be really inflated to come out with in the you know the get-go but as far as people being so excited for Vega and the performance turned out to be crap and a lot of people not being excited for this and the performance is pretty much guaranteed to be better, you know, good, not bad. It's going to it's going to be acceptable, if not better than acceptable, especially if you get the 2080 Ti. Well, I don't see a reason to hate on them that much. They're just big company doing big company thing. And hopefully AMD can pull up their socks and pull a Ryzen and make a you know a really good card with the seven nanometer navi you know eventually but i'm not holding my breath because that's going to be a long time away and rtx is going to be the way to go if only that the prices on 1080 ti's and 1080s and 1070s will plummet i'm out watching me join on screen and twitter i want to say uh patreon i want to say this because i don't get i don't have a huge following on patreon i have a real nice group of people that give me a few bucks here and there but if you can spare it it will help get me the better stuff to do the testing for the better stuff as well as every red cent that comes from that uh you know from patreon i put back in the channel by buying something on ebay some obscure technology or whatever the fun stuff you guys like watching so if you can hit that up as well as i'll put a whole bunch of 1080s and 1080 ti's uh amazon affiliate links below if you're looking to check out the prices for those and maybe buy them and if you buy them i get a little kickback that would be nice but uh you know at the very least just hit a like and a subscribe. I want to thank you very much for watching. I'm out watching me join Instagram and Twitter. And uh, this has been a look back at the 1080 Ti, a card that I hold close to my heart because it's a pretty nice damn card and it's done a lot of people a lot of good. And now that the prices are going to be like 500 and sub USD, I can, I can get on that train. I'll see you guys later.